Welcome to the Inventory Professional Podcast, brought to you by Inventory Base, providers of industry leading property inspection software, accredited training, and on demand property reports. Join us as we discuss the latest news, legislation, and all things property, hosted by our very own inventory expert, Sean Hemming Metcalf. With regular special guests, listen in to our open and honest discussions about the role of the inventory professional and how to navigate through this ever-changing, fast-paced industry. So welcome to the Inventory Professional with myself, Sean, and co-host Melissa from MGN Inventories. And I would like to come at our very special guest, which is Syra from NSPCC, who's a senior consultant with the Consultancy Service. I'm pleased for you to be joining us today. I'm really, thank you so much, Sean, for inviting us. I mean, this is just such a great opportunity. I'm, I'm just so pleased that Inventory Base are considering safeguarding at a time like this. I, th- I think it's just amazing. So thank you so much for the invite. We're, we're really, I'm really pleased to be here and represent the NSPCC. Oh, no, it, honestly, it's, it's definitely our pleasure. It's something I certainly myself been thinking about um, for a long time. And, and to set the context, um, Infantry Base Academy, in support of the NSPCC, have just launched a safeguarding awareness course for infantry providers and also the property industry as a whole, because uh, it, it's something that I'm very passionate about. We, as infantry professionals, are going into people's properties all the time, often certainly with the interim inspections, they're tenanted, there's families there. We're interacting and interacting with tenants and, and children whilst um, we're carrying out our reports. Um, and I think it's vital that we use that opportunity to help at the NSPCC to safeguard children, to um, help them recognise where there's issues in the uh, family home that normally most people wouldn't get to see because they just don't have the access that we as infantry providers and property professionals do. So, Sarah, tell our listeners about your current campaign with the NSPCC and also why it's so important, especially during this current COVID crisis? I suppose the most important thing is that we're still here for children um, during this time and it couldn't be more crucial than any other time during during this sort of crisis. So um, the, we've had some government funding support of about 1.6 million and that's to help raise awareness and expand our capability um, and to provide safe confidential space um, to deal with the rising numbers that we've had of concerns around abuse mm-hmm. of children during this sort of pandemic. So, um, you know, we've got the helpline for adults to call in um, who might be concerned about children. And then we obviously have our child line as well. So, I mean, that, that support's been immense to us. And, um, you know, we found that actually the voice calls that we've been getting from children have actually dropped, which doesn't surprise us because maybe there's less opportunity now for them to be able to pick up a phone and actually speak to somebody because they're in a home environment with with uh, other people. Mm-hmm. But actually what we found is online and email as that traffic has almost doubled um, in relation to the contact that we're having uh, from, from young people. I mean, it, it's so important to us at this time and there seem to be five key themes of the con- type of contact that we're having from children and that seems to be around mental health, uh, emotional health, um, suicidal thoughts, um, self-harm and domestic abuse and those seem to be the sort of key areas that we're getting contact about at the moment so it's absolutely crucial really that, that we are here for children right now um, because you know I think issues have been exasperated for children They've lost um, a lot of the professional support that they might have had previously and whether that's through statutory agencies or the NHS or even personal support in terms of family, friends, extended family. They've lost all of that. So actually, they're more at risk as as a result of it. And, you know, a home is a safe haven for a lot of children. So I think when this pandemic started, both my children live in London um you know for me it was so important to get them home as soon as possible and they wanted to be home as soon as possible because it was a safe environment for them for many children that isn't the case mm-hmm. um and this is really why it's so important at this time for us to to be here for children but also i think this is a great and unique opportunity for inventory base to be to be raising awareness around safeguarding at this particular particular time for those children for those hidden children really that are at home and um, you know maybe having having issues that people might not be aware of, professionals are not seeing at the minute, but actually 
um, property professionals may get, get the opportunity to see. So that's actually quite unique access and really, really important. Yeah, I mean, that's something that certainly when I started um, looking at the whole issue around awareness, it's, like, it's something I've, I've been aware of, certainly when I was working in the prison service and, and my work with offenders, with um, their families, with cognitive therapies, with probation service. And so I, I was aware then, but what was very stark to me, certainly when I started in this industry, is, is that lack of awareness, the fact that if you ever mentioned anything to anybody we you know most people just look at me as to say well i have no idea what you mean and certainly melissa when you and i were talking about this is uh, is i think this certainly was is within your experience where you know there's been issues and, and no real understanding of what it is the awareness and what to do about it yes absolutely i mean i um, um come from a sort of an estate agency background the lettings background and used to carry out um, interim visits as, as part of the role and um, in, in two actually different employers two different circumstances there were um, experiences that certainly I found that I wasn't entirely sure how to proceed with and it's only when you kind of encounter both of those that you think things need to be in place and it's certainly something that I've taken with me that makes me think I need to be aware and these are things that I need to look at and um, obviously looking through the course materials that have been produced for the training it, it's obviously there are things that are an immediate red flag to you but there are other things that are much more subtle that actually you need to pay attention to and think that this this has a bigger impact and you know what's going on here and the implications and I've kind of got experience of both of those as sort of an immediate red flag and then one that was a little bit like oh this this probably isn't you know quite right um, but in both different companies in both circumstances there wasn't really a procedure in place so it was kind of setting it out and winging it from there um, obviously you know I had managers above me and then we um, sort of discussed how to go forward and what you know what things would be best. And I think that's one of the things that is very stark, certainly for me, looking at the industry, because I've, I've got an eye in two camps. One in, in the fact that to what we're trying to do with Infantry Base Academy, way, um, raise awareness, train people, get them to think beyond the report. But also as an inventory provider, there's a lot of a lot of kind of lack of information not because it's not there but an understanding that it is there and where to access it and what actually that means and I mean it wasn't until I started really researching both the training and also the background for the NSPCC that I realized exactly how much support and information is out there but as as a as a provider as an industry we're just not even even aware of or we're just not accessing or we we just don't understand why there is a need but clearly um so there is a need absolutely i think it's that that thing isn't it that um <clears throat> it's that sort of taboo subject that when people start to think about safeguarding or the protection of children or abuse they think the extreme mm. you know they think oh you know it's about sexual abuse or it's about physical harm and and you know and that, that that's for professionals that work in that arena to deal with um, but actually you know we can be proactive in what we're doing which is something that obviously you're looking at you're what you're doing now when we're having this podcast and the training that you've developed that it's actually about being able to be proactive and safeguard children so that early intervention and we actually know from research that early intervention is actually crucial and you know, if you're getting in there early and you're seeing some of the signs and the indicators that actually you're gonna, that's gonna make a huge impact on children. Um, so it's, it's absolutely you know, crucial. It's, it's important, I think, that you know, having that awareness, um, raising that and, and people understanding that it isn't just about sexual abuse or physical abuse, it's so much more, you, know, you go into homes and it's about those um, looking out for, or you know, looking broader than I'm, I've come here to do this task because there is a duty of care mm. and there is an ethical and moral duty as well, I suppose. And, and we all have that, that, you know, we all have a role and a part to play. Um, and for, you know, property professionals to be able to have that unique access of going into a home and picking up those signs. And you could be having just a dialogue with a parent or dialogue with children within that home. And just from that dialogue, you could be picking up a lot of things. You could be that voice for that child 
that one voice for that child, that bridge between, you know, them getting that support and, you know, you accessing help for them. And that's absolutely crucial. You know, it could be the environment that you might be seeing something in. So, you know, it could be that there's lots of alcohol around, there's no supervision, um, you know, the environment is neglectful, the children are unkempt. You know, I don't know in terms of um, the property professionals, in terms of inventory base and the inspectors or clerks that go into homes. I mean, do they see the whole house when they go in? Is that what they're doing? Yes, I mean, certainly from the interim um, visit, that's exactly what they should be doing. Right. Um, okay. I mean, the so list of please... Sorry. So you should have access, so, so I was going to say, so you should have access then to, if you're having access to a whole house, you should be seeing more or less any, everybody within that home. Now, I don't know how many houses are visited in a day, in a week, in a month, or even in a year, but many of those households, I should imagine, will have children in them. Well, um, at the moment, there's over 5 million um, tenanted properties and they average, uh, they say, around about 1.2 million worth of um, moves within the rental sector. Wow. So there's a lot of people living in the rental sector and they're made up of all manner of different kind of like groups, i.e. families, individuals, friends, etc. So it doesn't always necessarily mean that every single property we'll go into will have a child. It doesn't no. necessarily mean that every single property, the child will be there. But as you quite rightly say, um, if we're in a property, there will be indications or there could be indications, but you've got to be looking for them. You've got to be more yes. aware and not yeah. just focusing on the property. I mean, Melissa, if you, you know, you jump in here as well. I mean, when you're doing interims, um, are, what are you looking for predominantly? So, you know, uh, on the basis of checking the property, it really is... Um, from my initial point of view is to pick up things that might not have been um relayed to the agent or the landlord um so any immediate sort of maintenance problems you know the amount of places i've been into where there's been a leak and no one said <laughs> um but then it is i think it's just really being aware of your surroundings and certainly from the experiences that i've had before i'm now much more open to um really having sort of having a look I'm not being intrusive, you know, I'm not, I'm not necessarily going in cupboards or anything like that, but um, like you, you can tell if there's a lot of alcohol on a worktop or there's, you know, a lot of mess on the floor. So it's those kind of things. And also I'm um, generally quite chatty anyway. So when people are there, I'm, I'm always chatting to the parents. Children tend to follow you around if you're in. So, you know, you can say, you know, you're off school today. What have you been doing if it's the holidays? And you've got such a good opportunity to, you know, chat to the parents. And you can, you can gauge if they're being a little bit cagey to you. Um, and often children um, are very enthusiastic to see someone. And we're a novelty. So, you know, someone goes in their home, you, you get the odd shy one, but otherwise I think it's like you're, you're an animal in a zoo, you know, they follow you around and they want to chat to you and they want to show you their bedroom. Um, so you've got such a great opportunity to chat to the children while they're there. Um, and, you know, properties where no one's home as well, then again, not being intrusive, but you have, um, you know, a brilliant aspect of being able to properly look at things. Whereas, you know, sometimes you might feel a little bit awkward if the parents, a home and following you from room to room you know how much you look into things whereas I think if you're on your own you you know you're able to properly assess a room and see if things look out of place you know if there's any red flags there Absolutely. And I think the main key thing, certainly from both our point of view, is the fact that we um, are very good at the dialogue. We're very good at talking to the uh, the tenants, to the families, um, because we're an impartial service. We're not part of the agency. Um, majority of inventory clerks tend to be um, like sole providers, small businesses, etc., Agents do have their own in-house um, clerks, um, which is absolutely fine. But in the whole we tend to be um, impartial and independent so in a way we can break down a, that initial barrier straight away so because sometimes we find that with um, in-house infantry cars maybe because they're part and parcel of the agency there's a little bit of a hesitant to either be truthful with them because they're worried in case you know things get back to the landlord etc whereas we tend to kind of concentrate on the fabric of the property but what we're doing as Melissa quite rightly said we're keeping our eyes open we're looking beyond 
just that um, report beyond the, the state of the carpet, etc. We're looking at our surroundings, we're getting an understanding, a feeling, a picture of what the property is like. And certainly um, things like, you know, if the, Melissa said the property's unkempt or if there's okay. children at home, certainly if it's a school day, I know at the moment it's a bit up in the air as to, you know, whether children are going to be back at school or not. So it's a bit more difficult. So the likelihood is they will be at home. But in the main, though, you know, if it's a school day and the children are there, you know, you can ask very polite but very non intrusive questions. Oh, you know, um, not at school today, you, you're missing on lessons, you, you, you know, you're out and about today, you're going to be in the garden, what you're up to type thing and have those general conversations. It's amazing how much information you can elicit just by being polite, not too intrusive, but you can, you're gaining a load and load of information. And sometimes it's not even the fact that, um, that the property maybe is in disarray or there's children there. But sometimes, and certainly in my experience, we found that we've been barred from going to a certain room. There's a room that's kind of shut off and we can't get to it. Sometimes it's just a very um, simple reasoning. The person's on night shift, they're asleep, that's fine. But I've also had a, a property where that was continuous. And even though we made arrangements to work around particular um, that particular person, we were never allowed in. So that makes you think, well, okay, well, why am I not allowed in? What's the problem? There are children about, are you seeing the same children each and every time? Is there something there? And I think certainly um, from a human element, our instincts are very, very well home. It will get a feeling that sometimes they're saying it's not quite right. But then it's what you then do about that and act on that. And what I've certainly found in my experience in the industry so far is there is no um, kind of lead, no authority, no signposting, no actual policy as to, okay, well, if, you know, I as a clerk working for a company, be, be big or small have got this where do I go what do I do who do I tell and then what happens to that information so I don't know if you can give us a bit more of a kind of like um, signpost for that Sarah yeah absolutely and just touching on what both you and Melissa have said really that um, absolutely in terms of I don't think you're necessarily seeing a threat when you go into homes where some professionals might be so families and children are much more amenable to having conversations with you and I think that's really important you'll be amazed about, about what you pick up from the body language and a child's response to their parent and vice versa. And all of those things are very telling. And Sean, the example that you just gave about not being able to have access to a particular room. And you said something really key there, which is something I was gonna to touch on. And that was about, well, you asked yourself the question, why? And that's really important. When something sits uncomfortable for you, when you have that kind of gut instinct that something tells you, that something's not quite right, and that's based on something you've seen, something you've smelled, something you've heard, you know, don't walk away with that gut feeling and not do anything about it because that instinctively is, is coming from somewhere. It, yes, it's human nature. Yes, it's also about having an awareness of these sorts of issues of what children might be going through or what might a parent, how a parent might be dealing with a child. So they're really important things and, you know, they should be acted upon. I always say no action is, isn't, you know, an option really. Mm -hmm. And even if that is just advice. So, and that brings me on to, in terms of what's available. I mean, I think it's great, you know, uh, Sean, you've developed this uh, safeguarding awareness training, um, you know, with, with the academy. And I think it's brilliant. And, uh, you know, what we would say that sits alongside that and what we have to offer is our it's your call training which is online training that you can access for a limited time free with the nspcc um, which is really around um, looking at those that do go into homes and it's a toolbox um, training really that gives you some really good tips and tools on what to look out for and what action you should take and what you should do obviously we have our helpline um, which is accessible for any adult that might be concerned about children. And, you know, even if you're a little bit worried about or unsure about what you should be doing or whether I should be reporting it, use it as an advice, you know, use it as a consultation. You know, um, if in doubt, check it out. That's why I always say, you know, you, you know, you can just say, look, I've, I've been into a property. I'm not really sure, but this is what, you know, I'm picking up and, you know, get some advice. Um, I think that's really, really important. We have a wealth of resources um, on our website that you can access. But, you know, one of the things at the minute is children are at home, they're hidden, they're not going out as much. So, you know, we know that online abuse, you know, that's something more of a worry right now. We have lots of resources really around um, what you can do and, you know, how risks can be managed in relation to that. 
so yeah there, there's a wealth of support between what you have um sean in terms of what you're developing and and guidance that you're developing as well in terms of what to do and um you know if you are concerned and i know that that that's something that that you're working on and progressing and at the same time you know you can they can access the nspcc as well our helpline and lots of other resources yeah definitely absolutely i mean the the i again until i started doing the research certainly for the the background of the course sector i didn't realize exactly how much uh, of a resource NSPCC both have, provide, offer and the fact that it isn't a case of you, you tell someone and then that's it. The, you know, they give you advice, they, 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 they talk to you, they, they help you understand what it is because sometimes, like I said, it's sometimes so subtle but your instinct's going something's not right here but it, it, and it gnaws at you and the worst thing as you quite rightly say is, is, to, is inaction. One of the things that you touched on right at the beginning, um, Sarah, was the fact that um, people na naturally think that, you know, as soon as you talk about neglect and abuse, it's like horrific. And don't get me wrong, it sometimes is horrific. And, um, and certainly something I've seen when, in my previous role with the prison service, I, I really do fully understand that. But equally, sometimes it can also be the, just the fact that the family's just not managing and neglect is happening because the family isn't able to cope and sometimes they're just looking for someone to kind of like almost say you know we can help you or someone to kind of step in not absolutely and and they won't necessarily feel that you know you're you're, you're trying to cause a problem and cause anxiety so but they just need someone to step in and, and actually help and certainly in my previous experience i've seen that i've experienced it and i've dealt with it um so sometimes it, it can be that you know you are the one person that will make that difference and and a cry for help is not necessarily something audible no it can be something very subtle very kind of like you know visual as it were yeah. Totally agree. And, and I suppose one of the reasons why we're having this conversation, and I would say it's so important for property professionals, is that one of the things that we do know from research and, and learning from our serious case reviews, which you can also access on our website, when I'm, I mean a serious case review, a serious case review takes place when a child dies or a child is seriously hurt. And normally there's an inquiry and there's recommendations that come out of that. And one of the things we know from uh, a number of serious case reviews is in hindsight, following the inquiry, is um, that uh, property professionals had a part to play in being able to do something for that child or that family so you talk, talked about families that may have issues and just needed support and you know in hindsight you know the police or statutory agencies or property professionals said well actually yes you know this mother didn't seem to cope very well she did seem to have mental health issues or the children were always crying or um you, you know they were unkempt or mother seemed to always be shouting at them because she had three children under the age of five and all these things come about afterwards um, and it's such a shame that they weren't picked up at the time and had that information been passed on it was just another piece in the jigsaw that would have helped in terms of that early intervention uh, of, of the family getting support and the children getting help as well and i think that's very relevant right at this moment in time while we're going through the pandemic the fact is that you know stress levels are so much higher it's so much more difficult there's a lot more worry about children are more at home um and it's just like a bit of a bit of a melting pot of emotion um and um i'm not saying that we as property professionals have the ability to solve everything we really don't but like you said if we do spot something that's maybe not quite right or like someone's maybe not not coping or they just don't seem right even could be I don't know about you Melissa if you've had this before where you've visited one uh, property spoke to the tenant everything's fine next time you go back things have changed slightly you know that they don't seem the same way I don't know if you've had that before yes absolutely I you know I've had circumstances where uh, even to the extent where the property property's been set up differently you know I went in and for example the lounge has been in the traditional place where you'd expect it to be but then all of a sudden that's turned into a bedroom and you know there, there are toys and children's things in there and uh, you know again it's just something that you notice um, uh, on both those occasions actually the tenants weren't present but it was just a rearrangement of the rooms and I knew something was different um, and it's just being aware of those circumstances. I mean, I pass that information on because it could mean something, it could mean nothing. You know, people could have, you don't know what people's situation is, whether they've got 
children from previous relationships that are now staying. But again, it's something that's changed in the property. Um, and in that circumstance, it's just say to the agent, you know, just to make you aware that the rooms have been set up differently now. So I don't know if there are more people staying there. Um, and, you know, that can have an impact on things. Yeah, exactly. And you might also have it where you've gone to a property one time and it, everything, like you said, is immaculate. Everything's in its place. It looks absolutely fine. Next time you go, it's completely the opposite. And it's such a, such a visual change. And, and sometimes depending if it's like you've only been there maybe three months prior to it, depending on how frequent these visits are. Um, will be potentially an indicator something maybe happened within the family unit that's not that's you know not quite right maybe they're not coping maybe they've lost their job but you know the tenancy itself is affected which then affects the family etc it, it can't it's not necessarily something very obvious but something like that could then make you think well what's happened and like you said Melissa then ask the question well what's going on and um and sometimes you know i've found certainly in my experience and certainly the experience of some of my clerks as well as soon as you start that conversation there's an outpouring um mm. and then the clerk then got to then think, well what do i do about that where, where does this information go who do i tell what do i do and and i think certainly sir sir and this is what we've been talking about previously about the housing industry as a whole about getting them to recognize the fact that um you know we are very much in a unique position um to be able to help in that respect totally absolutely i mean it's it's you know, it's an area we've been trying to reach because we recognize how crucial, how important it is, the unique access they get, the number of children that might be seen, which is why I asked earlier, you know, I'm, I'm sure there's many households um, that um, property professionals go in where there are children. And if you think about the reach and impact in terms of the number of children that you're reaching, and if you can just make that one little bit of difference and be the kind of eyes and ears and be that voice for that child is going to make such a difference in that in that child's life you know I think we're all coping very differently to time like this um, and even you know with the best kind of mental health and well-being people are struggling so for those families that already have issues already have services involved or professionals involved and are having limited access and same for the children it's you know it's exasperated all those issues and uh, you know it's a really really difficult time you know they're a hidden group um and it's so important and i think it's great that you're using the time right now to raise awareness um you know for 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 inventory base and and i think it's also really important that even when we come out of this situation and and the lockdown you know you're going to have school holidays you're going to have children that are still going to be at home it's going to be a long time before things get back to the new normal so actually the role is going to be really really crucial um in, in terms of you know picking up and having that sort of awareness raised around the kind of things that you might be looking out for Oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah, and I think that's the, that one, it's one of the key things at the moment is the fact that this is a, we're in a unprecedented times. This is the, kind of like the new normal and the new normal is going to be changing quite a lot until yeah. we settle down to whatever that then looks like, because yeah. we just don't know. Mm -hmm. So I think certainly from the housing industry, I think certainly from the inventory professionals in industry point of view, anything that we can do we should be doing um and from the awareness training point of view it's not going to uh, showcase every single situation every scenario it's not going to give you every single bit of um training that you need but it will certainly give you that awareness to get you to think so that when you get to the property you're thinking about that it's in your head so that if, if things are suddenly changed if they're very dramatic and different from when you were last there or this is the first time you've ever been there you're looking you're not just looking at the fabric of the property you're talking to the people you're gaining information to see okay is everything okay is there anything i need to do here and then the awareness helps signpost um to yourselves to other industries uh, bodies to, to um, there's a in the in the training there's um, a contact list of different agencies um, that are dealing with different aspects of um, uh, both child abuse neglect and also the wider issues so there, there's a host of information there for people to then you know go to look at potentially talk to talk to yourselves escalate where it needs to be or like you said get that advice and certainly from an inventory based academy point of view I'm the lead for that for inventory base so that if anybody has got any concerns um, they can you know they can come to me and just talk about them and I can hopefully help make sense of them or help signpost obviously we're not 
experts in our own right in that respect, I would always signpost them to NSPCC or the relevant authority. But certainly sometimes if we can act as that buffer between not doing something and doing it because we're too worried about not doing it or too worried that we're going to cause ourselves problems we can help obviously alleviate those fears but i think the more awareness certainly with the industry that we can create then the more comfortable and supportive people will feel to be able to make that next step if that's what they need or at least like you said go and get that advice to then yeah. determine okay well maybe there isn't anything there, there maybe there isn't anything I need to do. But like you said, it's that one crucial moment that's missed. It's a missed opportunity, isn't it? It is. Ultimately, yeah. that's, it's a missed opportunity. Yeah, um, and I think we need to be able to create a situation where there, there, that doesn't happen, that, you know, there's someone to go to and to, and to um, hopefully help support and ask. I mean, certainly from Melissa, your point of view, um, you run your own company and I know you, you work with some clerks a lot of the time but often it's just yourself isn't it it is yes and I think if I um possibly hadn't sort of had experience before which had brought it to the forefront of my mind it would be something that certainly I wouldn't really know what to do with you know I'd have to question myself and think oh who who should I tell who should I discuss it with and I think a lot of clerks that are independent as well um you know they haven't really got someone to go and tell um, you know, we, we do work on our own a lot. So there isn't necessarily someone that, that they can have a chat with and say, oh, you know, I saw this and I'm just not sure. And just have that kind of sounding board that you would do if you worked in an office, um, for example. So knowing that there's sort of the training out there for people. And like you say, it just brings to the forefront of people's minds before they go into the property. Um, and then also gives them guidance for, you know, who they can talk to, where they can go. I think it's so helpful because, uh, you know, it's so easy, I think, for people to see something and then immediately question themselves afterwards and think, oh, it's probably, you know, it probably wasn't that bad. I'm, I'm overreacting. I don't want to cause trouble. I'm being silly. But like you said earlier, if you have that immediate instinct that it's not quite right, whether you know you're entirely in the right or not, I think it, it's definitely worth just telling someone. Um, you know, maybe like yourself, sounding boarding to inventory base, having that advice, or you know, going further and looking at the NSPCC guidelines. Uh, it's just being able to really relay that, and um, at least you know you're flagging up anything that you know you thought it was an issue so it's worthwhile telling someone and I think for people that are independent it's so important that they've got someone that they feel that they can talk to yeah um, I think support is a key element here certainly and I know Sarah we, we've spoken um, between ourselves previously about the need for policies and procedures um, but a lot of it also is about just having a, someone to go to now for inventory based academy I'm that person but if you're an independent um, or a company maybe that's got a few clerks, you know, having someone who's awareness trained, who understands the issues and knows where to uh, signpost should it need, uh, you know, it need to be escalated. Then if um, each of those companies has someone who's taking that lead, has that knowledge, is keeping up to date, that's got to be a beneficial um, point for NSPCC. Totally. I mean, we, you know, we do say there should be somebody with a safeguarding designated role in an organization someone that you know people can turn to so you know if they've left a property and think you know something's niggling in me i'm not sure they should be able to turn to someone and i think that's really important whether that's somebody you know in inventory base or, or you know somebody in their own company or if you know they're working by themselves you know they can contact our helpline it's so important to just as Melissa said, speak to someone as a sounding board. It's, it's really important to share that and check out with somebody else what, what their opinion is and what they think and, and what, what should happen as well, rather than carrying that burden yourself. And I, I cannot, I, honestly, I cannot emphasize enough the crucial role that um, property professionals have to play in this. It's, you know, they may be the only person that goes into that home and sees children and sees family so it's uh, it's completely uh, absolutely valued it's so so important 
Well, I'm so pleased that as, as Infantry Base Academy, myself personally, and also Melissa, you know, are able to help with that, help raise that awareness. And we're really looking forward to um, getting that awareness training out to everybody and acting as that signpost and, and getting people to speak direct to NSPCC, to yourselves, to make sure that, like you said, every child and childhood possible is protected as much as we can do. Um, certainly um, within the awareness uh, training on Inventory Base Academy, we've got all the links, the telephone numbers and signposts for that. I'm the lead for Inventory Base Academy. So again, listeners point of view, if, you, if you're not sure if you want a bit of extra help or a sounding board, then I'm here. And then um, after the podcast, we'll add all the links into the show notes as well as to how you can contact the NSPCC, their helpline, their email, and and, you know, so you've got the ability to have a chat with um, any of those um, uh, professionals so they can help you understand what it is that maybe you, you think you're seeing and that you know, put it into perspective and, and potentially help someone if, if they actually need it. Um, so with that, Siren, I'm so pleased for you to have joined us. I'm really um, grateful for all your support and your help and, and for helping me develop the awareness training. Melissa, thank you very much indeed also for your input. I'm really really grateful it's so useful to have a uh, an industry professional's viewpoint other than my own because um, yes. <laughs> um you know I, I get very passionate about these things but we want to make sure that they're, they're they're there for a reason they help and they support and they're not they're just there just to potentially look good on a bit of paper thank you for the invite and thank you for for raising awareness around safeguarding we really really appreciate it thank you so no, much i'm very grateful very much indeed for your time and um, i'm looking forward to uh, continuing our work with the nspcc and just like i said doing as much as we can to help the industry understand what it is that they need to be aware of why they need to be aware of um, safeguarding children and um, hopefully positively that we don't really see that much but if we do that we act on it and like you said every childhood matters Thank you to all our listeners for joining us on today's podcast about safeguarding awareness with the NSPCC. All the details for the course are going to be shown at the bottom of the podcast in the show notes. And please do feel free to get in contact if you need any help, advice, support or access NSPCC via the links shown. Thank you. Thanks for joining us this week on the Inventory Professional Podcast. If you've enjoyed the show, subscribe to our podcast now and share the love. This podcast was brought to you by Inventory Base, providers of industry-leading property inspection software, accredited training, and on-demand property reports.